For this presentation, I'd like to take you through some of the components of PAT and um, look at some of the costs that are involved in, uh, in explaining and controlling agents, managers and accountants within PAT. So agency theory and PAT explain that principals try to have their agents align their own self-interest with those of the firms. In other words, with the interests of the principals. So never forget that under PAT and under agency theory, everybody is out to maximise their own self-interest. And that includes the shareholders. So when the shareholders um, want their agents to act in the benefit of the firm, what they really want is for their agents to act in their benefits. So they tend not to do this with threats or standover tactics. Their preferred use for motivating managers and their accountants to act in the interests of the firm and its owners is through the use of contracts. Now these contracts uh, incur costs to both the principals and the agents, but also benefits. And under agency theory and PAT, because the relationship between the principals and the agents uh, through contracts, we tend to see the firm as being a nexus of contracts. So the aim of these contracts is to align the interests of the principals and the agents. In other words, what's good for me is good for you. And the costs in aligning these interests are referred to as agency costs. And there's a little uh, presentation here from my favorite cartoon, Dilbert, uh, that might give you some idea of what's involved. Now, in agency theory and consequently in PAT, there's something you need to be aware of. So the principals might be the owners uh, and the ultimate boss, but they don't have the power. Why is that? Because the agents have access to more information than the principals. So the principals and the agents are not negotiating with each other on the basis of equal knowledge the agents always know more than the principals because they're working the business. They have access to more information. And this is what we call information asymmetry. If it was information symmetry, both sides would have equal information. But the managers and their accountants know more. And very often, the principals, the shareholders, and even the board of directors, they only know what the agents tell them. So that's a very important consideration that you need to be aware of. So that means that the principals need to spend more time, more resources in getting their agents to work in their interest, not just on the agent's interests. Now, of course, we know that the agent will work in the, in the agent's own interests. So rather than try and change the behaviour of the agent, uh, it's a matter of aligning the interests of the agent with the principles. So three main broad areas of costs are involved here. There are bonding costs that the agent might have to wear. So this might be uh, the agent signs a bond with the company that says, I will work here for three years and I won't seek employment elsewhere. Um, or the, aid, the, the agent might have to sign an agreement that says, I'm not going to undertake certain risky behavior. Uh, from the principal side, the main cost is the monitoring cost. So we have an agent or agents out there hopefully working in the best interests of the company, but we're not too sure. So it's best that we monitor. And we monitor by, by having 
various mechanisms and controls in place, such as bonus schemes to uh, get, keep, the, uh, keep the agent focused. Um, we have auditors uh, that go through the reports that the agents provide to the principals and can sign off and say, yes, these reports are reasonable. And then we have residual costs that are any other costs that might occur from uh, opportunistic behaviour by agents. Um, remuneration contracts are the prime method uh, for keeping an agent focused. And often these will involve some kind of performance bonus. There's many kinds of bonuses, um, but they can be broken down generally into two kinds. One is uh, a bonus based on accounting indicators, such as uh, the principals might like to see income or profit uh, grow by 5% each year, for example, and they might write that into the bonus scheme. Or there might be market indicators. For example, the principals might like to know that their share price is increasing by so many percent each year. But the problem with these bonuses are that the agent may not actually focus on the best interests of the firm, but simply on achieving these bonuses. And they can undertake a lot of opportunistic behavior for the sole motivation of maximizing their bonus. So great care has to be taken when designing bonus schemes because they can motivate and they can offer incentives for agents to uh, operate in rather disreputable ways uh, and can even initiate fraud. There are also political costs that you should be aware of. So not all costs in an agency relationship are between uh, the principals and the agent. Some costs are incurred by uh, political pressures, either by political operators or by activist groups, for example. So you might consider direct political costs might include um, charges or penalties le levied by governments. Um, and these might well arise from agents acting in self-interest or even from acting in the interest of the firm. Indirect political costs might include uh, costs from trying to appease public or political opinion. For example, if you're one of the big four Australian banks, there is a lot of political pressure uh, in Canberra at the moment to have a royal commission into the behaviour of the banks because some people in society and some people in government uh, see the banks as being opportunistic and interested in only in multi-billion dollar profits. Well, if you're on the verge of reporting a multi-billion dollar profit, you might think again. And opportunistic managers might find ways of reducing the profits through accounting, uh, adopting accounting practices. Quite legal, um, but the, the change in accounting might come about because of political pressure. These are what we call uh, political costs. So that's a very quick tour through uh, some of the costs uh, and the important components behind PAT. So in the following presentation, I'd like to have a run through um, some of the benefits and the problems involved in agency theory and PAT. So I'll see you then, bye.